hold you back anymore. Let me wow. Know. We are getting you ready for Passover with some delicious dinner recipes. Stay with us. Oh, look at that. It looks yummy. Let's mm. Talk Live continues right I hope we're after the break. You my go to. Told me everything about you. That's a whole move. I know that you're out here and there's things you gotta go through. Just know that these streets just don't love you. I'll pass over. It's that time of year filled with food and rich traditions. Yes. Yeah. And uh, from e <laughs> even though. E even though <laughs> the permission is translated into food, that doesn't mean it has to be bland. Right. And showing us how to put a modern spin on your Passover meal is Paula. Show you? Yes, you got it right. Yes. All right. Happy to be here. Thank well, we're you happy you're me. here because uh, Brian hasn't had lunch. I know. Oh, that's great. Well, I have lunch. I have snacks. I have. I'll cover you for the whole rest of the day. Yeah. So we, we, we yesterday had one of your friends on. We were talking about uh, different foods and different courses, mm -hmm. and and you're kind of uh, just trying to expanding our pal our Passover palette, if you will. Is that what I'm just saying? <laughs> Absolutely. My the idea behind the new Passover menu was to take traditional recipes, make them more contemporary, but also bring to the community healthy, fresher recipes okay. for seder's and for the entire week long. So here. I have this really easy tuna recipe, mm -hmm. which I'll make maybe as a first course for the seders, but during the week, because we have an eight-day holiday that right. we have like no bread, no pasta, no rice. Got to keep the kids eating the whole week, so mm -hmm. we always have cookies and desserts around the house. Okay. So you just buy like a fresh tuna steak, and it's, this is so simple, and you sprinkle it with basil and thyme on both sides and some pepper, and you don't even have to heat the pan. You know, you don't have to put any oil in the pan at this point. You literally just put it on a high heat, and you can do this okay. on a grill outside okay. if you want to as well, and then what you'll do is you put this in the pan and then you hear this wonderful sizzle right and we like it tuna kind of rare so you basically cook it until you just see this little quarter of an inch or so and right. then you turn it over and you cook it and you can see it from the side while it's cooking so you know not to overcook it and then then you take it out of the pan and then you put in some olive oil and this and is some after garlic. you've put it in there. Yeah, so now okay. I've seared it, so that takes maybe like one and a half, two minutes. Right. Yeah. Okay, because we like it where you put your garlic in garlic and you in cook there, that okay. up and you add right. in some chopped onions, red onion, and that cooks for about two minutes or so. And then I take capers, capers. which has mm. a nice little saltiness, and, you know, usually black and green olives. I cut them into little slivers because I like having different shapes in recipes. Yeah. And you cook <laughs> that up and you add a little sugar just to balance that off. And then you end up with this, like, when after this cooks, you have this, like, wonderful, kind of a relish that you sprinkle over your tuna. Okay, so you, wow. And you could serve it on the side for people who are not, you know, don't really like pet olives and capers. My kids like it plain with avocado. We eat a lot of guacamole on Passover. So. <laughs> yeah. On matzo, it's like one of our favorites. Let me ask you about that because sometimes, you know, when you think Passover, it kind of gets a bad rap in the past. Yeah. Why is that? Because you're making some great stuff here. Yeah, this is just fresh food and, you know, the recipes in this book is what I cook for my family all mm -hmm. year long. So it's a Passover book, but not really because right. couldn't you see doing this on a summer for yeah. a brunch? So, Passover food gets a bad rap because so many recipes take matzah and layer them with cheese and, and vegetables or take matzah cake meal and mm -hmm. use that in desserts and it gives everything this like pasty, dry right. taste. So if you stay away from that, and I use a lot of almond flour, hazelnut right. flour for Passover desserts. So yes, I saw that. Mm -hmm. And so these are cookie bars that are based with almond and my biscotti, which everybody loves. And then this is a pie, which is, you know, not typical for Passover. Say, can you have a Passover pie? <laughs> oh, I have in my <laughs> second book, The Holiday Kosher Baker, I have about four different pies and different crusts. This is a nut crust with walnuts and almonds and chopped basil in the crust. Oh, wow. And you press it in the pan and then you cook up traditional like lemon cream and put that in and put a meringue on top. Okay. So it doesn't look like Passover food, but why not eat pie or tart any time right. of the year? It's Absolutely. just really beautiful. Okay, and then what other yummy dishes do you have here? Okay, so I have a roasted beet salad here with golden mm -hmm. and red beets and pomegranate seeds. Yeah. Oh. And quinoa was approved for Passover a few years ago. <laughs> so it's like our new official grain for the holiday. Okay. <laughs> Scrutiny. How did yeah. it become? Oh, okay? it took a little while. The Orthodox Union had to dispatch a bunch of guys with kippot to Bolivia to see how quinoa was grown to make sure okay. it didn't mix with prohibited grains. Right. So okay. now we love quinoa. So okay. quinoa is with uh, pine nuts and roasted sweet potatoes and cranberries. And then I have asparagus over there. This mm -hmm. is the easiest recipe ever, almost like the tuna. You either roast or boil the asparagus quickly, and then you saute nuts in the pan till they toast. 
grated orange zest and garlic and olive oil and just sprinkle that on top. Wow. That I'm all about good. easy. You know, Passover is so we entertain so much. Yes. We have huge meals. I have 17 people Friday night, 20 mm -hmm. Saturday night. I was going to so, say, do you have this all eight nights? Like, Well, we have to eat. We don't eat out during the holiday because we're right. very strictly kosher. So every night I'm cooking dinner. Okay. So I'm pretty much some other all kinds of things. <laughs> oh, yeah. I have family members. My dad and my brother are coming from Florida. I've got four kids. So trust me, I got mm -hmm. a, I'm a short order cook for eight days. <laughs> um, so I do a lot of breakfast food. I do granola. I have granola in the book. And I have rolls. And I have Passover waffles, which is another okay. unusual thing. Yeah. So How I do have, you make those? It's made with almond flour. They're okay. so good, you would want to make them the rest of the year. Right. But Passover granola is a staple. I keep baggies of it in my handbag, mm -hmm. and all week long, if I get hungry, mm -hmm. I'm eating my granola. granola. You need a little snack, but, yeah. But the chocolate cookies are also really popular. We yeah, eat those. Yeah, Brian, pass those Yeah, down. you need to eat some cookies or cookie bars. And can I quickly just ask you about the beets out? You, what kind of dressing? Do you just put like an oil or a vinegar? Oh, what yes. Do you do I have dressing that okay. is just like orange juice, orange zest, um, a little bit of cinnamon, mm -hmm. and it's really, really simple. I have lots of salads in here. In the book, I also have a Seder plate salad okay. that mm. has roasted lamb and hard boiled eggs and all the haroset mm. ingredients like walnuts and apples in the salad mm -hmm. and I have lots of soups everything is just super easy I but just want to make this what is this made with so melted chocolate ch cocoa chocolate chips ground mm. almonds really I yes almond. I mean There's they're just good. They're gluten-free. Yeah. So if you have anybody on a gluten-free diet, you know, this they would perfect. want this cookbook because they have lots of gluten-free desserts, mm -hmm. and most of the food is gluten-free. Well, overall, it's just a really good book. I mean, right. look at this. This is no, good food. It's good food. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good food for any time, really. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thank you so much for being with us here today. This is awesome. More options for you to try out. Uh, thank you, and we'll be back after the break. We're going to take a look at this yes. morning's headlines and get a look at the forecast. Stay with us. We'll have more of Let's Talk mm -hmm. Live on the other side of the break. <laughs> 